Wait, you pegged a guy? Yes, I have. What? <laughs> awesome. I yeah. haven't gone to peg I a guy. You knew that. No, I didn't know that. I'm oh, yeah. super jealous. <laughs> well, get on it. I well, <laughs> well, get on it. I, you get on it. <laughs> I feel like we could work this out right now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, come on. If you're happy with the same old ways of dating, if you enjoy sucking at communication, and you have no desire to improve your romantic life, then our podcast might not be for you. But if you want some out of the box ideas to deepen your current relationships, broaden your sexual horizons, develop a better understanding of yourself. Or learn more about non-monogamy. Then you've come to the right place. I'm Jace. I'm Emily. And I'm Dedeker. And this is the Multi-Amory Podcast. On this episode of the Multi-Amory Podcast, we are talking with Cooper S. Beckett the host of the Life on the Swing Set podcast, and whose new book, Approaching the Swingularity, uh, is out today. So you can go pick that up right now. Uh, With Cooper, we're going to talk about swingers resorts. We're going to talk about the crossover between the swinging world and the polyamorous world. Uh, And we're even going to talk a little bit about pegging. So stay tuned for all of that. All of our minds got a little bit blown. Yeah. I think each and every one of us. (laughs) And with that, let's get to the interview. All right, so here we are with Cooper S. Beckett. Thank you so much for joining us today, Cooper. Oh, it's my pleasure. So, Cooper, I went back and checked, and we had you on our podcast way back in ancient history in episode 17, when we were just like small, innocent podcast babes. We were a wee podcast. (laughs) A wee podcast making its way in the world. Um, (laughs) And that was for your first book, Life on the Swing Set, which was kind of more of a memoir. It was kind of your collected, like, mostly autobiographical writings about Mm -hmm. your kind of transition through exploring the swinging community and exploring polyamory, things like that. Um, If we fast forward to 2016, in episode 53, we reviewed your first novel, A Life Less Monogamous, and Mm -hmm. here you are today with a new book that's going to be coming out today, the day that this podcast releases, the release day for the sequel to A Life Less Monogamous, Approaching the Swingularity. So... That's all your accolades that I know of, anyway. Um, I wanted to ask, is this actually your second novel, or have you written other novels that we are not aware of? I have I have written and not published other novels. Okay. Uh, okay. And oh, that's as, awesome, and, and, you know, it's funny, uh, I was looking at some of the earlier things, like, because once you understand how to publish, it's like, well, what else can I publish? <laughs> and I was looking at some of my earlier things, and it was definitely a less woke time. Mm. Mm. And mm-hmm. yeah, I'm, I'm I'm no longer comfortable with yeah. some sure. of my early plots. Yeah, that's yeah. why we've been archiving yeah. some of our early episodes. Sure. <laughs> oh yeah, I've done that. I, I had a I had a fight with Dylan actually mm. about four episodes. Uh, the title was. Uh, Boys have penises, girls have vaginas. Oh, mm. I see. Yes. It was, that it was, they do. <laughs> it was a, a boy, uh, a, a men and women cast where we'd ask the same questions to the different groups. Like we oh. had five guys, we had five, and it was a cool idea. But there a were a lot limited. of elements that made me uncomfortable about it, mm-hmm. and the the whole gender identity thing now, mm-hmm. and using mm-hmm. girls, you know, which yes. which I'm trying to stop doing. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, yeah. Yeah. So there, so those four just disappeared one day. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I understand. Yeah, we just like for us, it's mostly embarrassment about our audio quality. Yeah. Um, well, and as, more and our own speaking like quality, and speaking quality, <laughs> yeah. things like that, as, as well as like. Plenty of things like that sprinkled in of being less woke and less, un, yeah. you know, less informed yeah. and not mm-hmm. using the right terminology, yeah. things like that. Yeah. So because reviews will out. still show up from year one oh, criticizing gosh. something I said, you know. Yeah. So it's, yeah. yeah. <laughs> so uh, to fill our listeners in on this book in particular, so yes. um, a life less monogamous kind of uh, overall it tracked the story of uh, Ryan and Jen. Um, mm-hmm. Who were just opening up their relationship, like kind of just Mm -hmm. dipping their toes into the swinging world. Um, And that contrast to this new one, Approaching the Swingularity, which is set at a a swingers resort uh, specifically. And it's so funny because Emily was like, wait, these are real? I I was just like, 
oh my god, there are actual resorts out there in the world where like people cater to this, and you know, oh, everyone yes. they're uh-huh. used to it and all that. I couldn't, I, I had no idea. <laughs> now I know. <laughs> well, I'm I'm happy to help open your eyes. Yeah, to, I appreciate to the wonders that. Of, of swing resorts. So I feel like you've been. I know I've seen on your social media that like. That you know, the life on the swing set, people do a takeover of desire, like maybe yes. once a year or something like oh, that. Cool. And it sounds like you have experience with swing resorts outside of that as well. What's been like your personal experience kind of entering like the world of actual resorts, you know, different from just going to play parties or just swapping with someone that you know, yeah. but like fully immersing yourself in this world? Well, I can only speak to one resort, and that's Desire Resort mm-hmm. in, uh, Cancun. in Cancun. And I can only speak to that because once I went there, I never wanted to go anywhere else wow. really at all. <laughs> like my family keeps asking me to go on vacation to Disney World. It's like, but then like, I but... would have to. No, I, I can't. I just can't do it. <laughs> so um, Desire, I, the first time I went, I went with uh, the Sex is Fun podcast. Are you familiar with them? Yeah, yeah. I'm familiar with yeah. that one. Yeah. Okay. And they had a very small group, about 25 couples, and I went with them, and it was just this weird experience of feeling like you belong. It's the way I hear people describe Burning Man. Mm. You know, like you walk in here, and suddenly it's like, well, this is this is exactly where I need to be for the rest wow. of my life, you know? Right. Mm. And... Uh, immediately after that trip, I thought, you know, in in my standard fashion, that I can do better, <laughs> and decided to host my own. Oh, nice. and um, so Swing Set hosted uh, this this past year was our fifth year. Wow, right. awesome. and our first takeover of the resort. That's so. So cool. we oh, moved see. from uh, the first trip we had something like thirty, then we moved to fifty, then we moved, you know, and and last year we had one hundred and eleven couples Whoa. with us. Wow. wow, that's so many. So people. it was just only only swing, swing set. set people. Wow, yeah. wow. wow. that's incredible. Wow. Yeah. Oh when gosh. what's really amazing about it is, you know, the resorts like a play party. It feeds on whom is there. You know, so so yeah. you go to two play parties at a club one night and the next night, it's going to be two completely different experiences. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I think it's something about the way we promote and what we talk about in our promotion. You know. We talk more about Doctor Who in our promotion of our swing <laughs> resort thing than, so than anyone else. Cool people. <laughs> yeah. So we're getting geeks. Yeah. And right. we talk a lot about queer people. We talk nice. a lot about poly and uh, you know, any level of interest in exploration sexually is welcome on our trip. And yeah, we, yeah. we overemphasize the by guy thing because that's the only thing that will get by guys to attend <laughs> yeah. is, sure. yeah. is to feel like it's a safe space to explore. So that's I think yeah. we've we've sort of created a sort of self selection in who attends our trips. Yeah, I was going to ask if there was any like vetting that happened between. Um, there I don't isn't. Know, you, you, not okay. really. Okay. But, but, it, but it makes uh, sense because I think it's a similar thing to what we have in our Facebook only patron group yeah. mm-hmm. for our Patreon people is that the people who listen to you probably have enough in common with kind of your ideals and yeah, what you're putting what out you, there. And, what yeah. and and then the same with our with our people on Patreon. It's yeah. like if you're willing to actually put some money toward this or like go commit to going to a show or something, like you're gonna have enough in common with it that you're Yeah. Yeah. I just started giggling because I imagined like our, our patron group doing a takeover of a swing resort. Oh, and just, I, like, would oh, God. God. I would love well, that. You should, you should just all come with to <laughs> art. Right. Yeah, we should just yeah. make it a big old massive like, That'd be swing super set cool. network style thing. Mm-hmm. Um, but so, so last funny. year we did uh, we did a takeover for the first time and that allowed us to change things at the resort. So oh, it allowed so. us to really open up uh, the theme nights, get rid of mm. some of the more oh. swingery themes. You know, uh, we wait, we wait, wait, hang on. To, what 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 counts as a swingery thing? You know, like like. You you see mansions and bunnies, you know. Yeah, you see yeah. you, you see a sexy schoolgirl. It's like, well, mm. that's all fun, but it's not creative at all. Yeah, right. yeah. So whereas on our theme night we had space cowboys, you know. Nice. We, we had, okay. So nice. we're we're doing, and you can still do the other shit, and that's fine. <laughs> and, and and when I say the other shit, I'm not judging. <laughs> sure. But we also were able to have the resort build dungeon equipment for us and actually wow. had a dungeon takeover of the disco one night oh, uh, nice. we, we wow. partnered with uh ending the sexual dark age another great podcast that's uh bdsm themed and they came and co-hosted and 
they'd never done this at the resort before. So they said, send us your plans for the St. Andrew's Cross or the, or the flogging bench, and we will build them. Wow. wow. Oh, God. And so now the resort yeah. is... Talk about customer is, service. Yeah. Oh, I know. It's, it's amazing. <laughs> Well, when you wow. when you do a takeover, really, there's no one to upset. Yeah, that's you know, true. Right. That's Everybody true. who comes with us knows what we're doing. Mm -hmm. So that's why last year had more boy kissing, I think, than the resort had ever seen before. Lovely. Uh -huh. You know, more cross-dressing than the resort had yeah. ever seen before. That's right. Nice. Because we create a safe space. And that's really what makes it amazing to me. Yeah. Is yeah. that um, I can walk in there and feel safe. Nice. Yes. And when, that's huge. Yeah. When I don't, and it happened once this past year, because I don't know if you know, but there was an election in November. Oh, yeah. I'd, I'd, almost, I'd almost forgotten about it. He I brought it back up. Trust me. I never will. So I won't, I won't dwell on it, but there was, there was a real asshole mm. um, on election night. Mm. And I had to make a call to protect the masses, you know, protect the, right. the large number of people who are crying at the bar yeah. versus yeah. his right to say whatever he wants, yeah. mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. yeah. So that's, yeah. that's a hard thing as a host. And, you know, that's, yeah. but I, I feel it's, it's what makes our, our trips safe. Yeah. yeah. That's mm -hmm. funny. Cause Jace was also at a play party on election night. Yeah. That's so <laughs> funny you mentioned that it, uh, we didn't have anyone, you know, everyone was kind of on the same page politically at that particular one, but it was, um, definitely the saddest, Play party. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that night there was a girl orgy, mm -hmm. uh -huh. lady orgy, and uh, they thought what a great way to welcome our first female president. Yeah, right. Jeez. And then yeah. they said they suddenly people started coming up the stairs to the hot tub crying. Yeah. yeah. And we knew. I'm gonna I'm gonna take us away from politics. Yep. Yeah. Let's I'm do sorry. it. Let's do it. I'll, I'll spend the I'll yeah. spend the time talking politics. On yeah. that. Well, so so something that we had on our list to talk about later, but uh, we wanted to get to now since you've already brought it up, uh, is <laughs> is that crossover between poly and swinging? Yes. Um, and it's something that um, you know we were recently on uh, the Dr. Susan Bach <laughs> yeah. show, oh, gosh. and oh, something wow. that something that she actually was very complimentary about was how as a poly podcast um, that, that we're never, uh, you know, demonizing or saying anything bad about swinging, sure. that it's just like, this is a different choice. You can, yeah. you can do both. There is some crossover stuff like that. And, and I know that, um, you know, a lot of our education about that crossover has partly come from you uh, oh, and what right. you do on your podcast. Um, but I did want to bring it up because I, I, have always kind of wondered at something like a swingers resort or something like that, if there might be a certain like fear when a, when a poly group shows up a certain fear of like, <laughs> Oh no, are they here to like take away our partners or, or, or not to, respect like, kind me. of the, <laughs> or not respect like the sanctity of this, you know, primary relationship yeah, or something. Union, I was just yeah. curious sure. if that ever comes up as, as a, I think, I think less and less as we took over more, I mm -hmm. think there was definitely there, there's always a weird discomfort with the unknown, whether it's BDSM, whether it's poly. Yeah. And so I think early on when uh, poly couples would come to the resort who also, I mean, if you go to this resort, you're probably also interested in casual sex, right? Sure. <laughs> probably yeah. not necessarily, but probably. So if you're, if you're having casual sex, it doesn't really affect or enter into that situation that you are also, by the way, poly yeah. mm -hmm. and you're on vacation. So the odds of wandering uh, in and, and then meeting this long distance lover, though <laughs> I, I have met quite a few people who are <laughs> long distance lovers now. Uh, I think, I think it's just, uh, yeah, the people who comes with us know that nobody is going to try to steal their partner into mm -hmm. the, the, uh, the cabal of poly. You know, it's, <laughs> it's not going to happen. Mm -hmm. And so it's okay. But, yeah, there's definitely in in generalized swinging. There's definitely that fear of poly, be and I had I understand it because I had it at the beginning too. Mm -hmm. Because um, you know, love seemed scary and complicated, and I think we'll all agree it is scary and complicated. Yeah, <laughs> but yeah. sex seemed easy, <laughs> mm -hmm. and. As I've moved along through my life, you know, and in the even in the two years since. I was on your show. Yeah. Now uh, my partner and I are dating a third. Oh, and nice. we have been for the last year, which is awesome. And we know how rare anniversaries can be in <laughs> triads. For yeah, sure. Yeah. Uh -huh. So it's it's always a challenge and it's always 
a lot of communication, and I, yeah. I think I think uh, swinging, I think, is opening up more, mostly because I think the younger crowd is homogenizing a little bit. Sure. So it's less I'm a swinger, I'm poly. It's mm. more I'm open, mm-hmm. which is really where we should be in the first place. You know, mm-hmm. you can be open however you'd like. Swinger right. and poly are just easier ways to describe yourself. You know? Sure. Yeah. Actually, it's funny that you say that because because I do feel that I get this sense of there's a little bit of like the old guard with the swinging yeah. community versus kind of the new generation. Um, the same I mean, is true with poly. Well, yeah, definitely. Yeah, right. Of course. I mean, with almost everything, really. Because I feel yeah. like if I was going to sit down right now and just like Google like a sex party or a swinging club or whatever, that it's still I'm st- probably still going to find the the typical tired out like. You know, single ladies yeah. get in free. Mm-hmm. Single men, yeah. it's eight thousand dollars. <laughs> um, you know, no guy on guy action. That. Mm-hmm. You know that, you that know that's what's, still there. What's However, been really interesting is mm-hmm. when I switched from swinger parties to queer parties to queer play parties, hmm. uh, and I credit um, my friend Mister Pent for that because he was having those with his friends. You know, and I was from the community of swinger parties where you mm-hmm. invite couples, mm-hmm. maybe some unicorns. If you know any, they are yeah. rare. <laughs> and then people pair off. But when, once I went to one of his parties, it really opened my eyes on how much more fulfilling it can be when when the group is queer. You know, mm-hmm. and, and not everybody yeah, needs true. to be queer. It's more the... The feel of everything, you know, yeah. having having trans people there, having yes. gay people yeah. there, and because right. gay people really don't go to swinger parties, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. they just don't, yeah. Mm-hmm. So yeah. it's it's made a huge difference in in the the way I look at things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Did yeah, you have a, you, a, yeah. I was going to say that, but it's like so. If that's, I mean, that obviously those kind of. Uh, habits or tendencies of the old guard swinging community are still there. But then I feel like on a personal level, any swinging or play party community that I've connected to is very much like this, this more new generation that is open to queer people and trans people and bisexual men and things like that. And I, I do really appreciate that in your book that you wrote in a lot of characters that were bisexual or trans or yeah. gay or lesbian or whatever, that there, there was this good representation of sexuality across the board. Mm-hmm. Uh, I, so I had a question for you, and I don't, I don't know if you have an answer for it, but uh, hmm. something I've been really curious about um, f- because of the, the play party group that I found a while ago that I've been to a few of their things is that I was definitely um, one of the only poly people there Mm -hmm. um that i you know i went with a girlfriend of mine at the time and everyone was like oh wow like these guys are poly you should ask them (laughs) about that as if that's like a wow crazy thing i've never heard of this uh or you know i've heard of it but i've never actually known a real one um (laughs) they exist in the world in the wild yeah (laughs) what was interesting to me though is that um no one ever used the word swinger like Mm -hmm. that that wasn't a term that anyone there used to describe themselves. And I was just curious if there is, if you've come across like a, a newer way that people identify. And these are people yeah. at this group, mostly in their twenties and thirties. I, I wondered if, if there's some kind of new term or I like, hip a, term. <laughs> I mean, you I said open. people are afraid huh. of the hmm. term swinger, younger yeah, groups, be, yeah. because it's been, I mean, it's been very specific what swingers are Mm -hmm. in the world. I like the term swinger. I I like the idea of taking it back, you know, from, Mm. from the, the scary, dangerous section that it, it became. Mm -hmm. I've, I've noticed that people just are, they're charting their own course. Now it's, it's not about swinging or poly. It's about not monogamy. Yeah. Sure. You know, because that's no longer as interesting. And I, I've, feel like I was looking at this, the rise of um, poly in the, the zeitgeist, you know, in on magazine covers. Mm-hmm. And it seems to coincide with the financial collapse. And I think the reason that is, is huh. because the financial collapse happened and people started living at home longer, meaning they yeah. weren't going to get married. They weren't getting their house. So if your course is interrupted, you're not on that track anymore. It gives you time to actually think about what it is you want. Hmm. And when you really think about what you want, more and more people are thinking, well, maybe it isn't monogamy. 
Yeah, mm, yeah, yeah, definitely. That's For a really sure. interesting theory. I hadn't yeah, really considered I like that. that. Yeah. yeah, no, I think that does make sense. Yeah. Uh, I have a very uninformed question <laughs> for you. <laughs> okay. Um, so I, I, I myself have only ever been to like swinging events, you know, okay. and swinging spaces like play parties, but I've never been on a, uh, you know, been, went on a swinging cruise or been to a swinging resort, anything like that. And there's a scene in your book where there's a massage therapist who works for the resort who mm-hmm. um, doles out some happy endings <laughs> and it's, it's very hot and, and very fun. <laughs> but I started thinking, I was like, wait, the people who work at these resorts, like, do they get in on the action? Are they yeah. allowed to? Do they not? Do they, th- like, like, what can you tell me about the people who actually work at these kind of resorts? Well, the first thing I'll tell you is they're amazing. Okay. I'm assuming they've <laughs> seen it all. I'm sure they've, they've seen, seen it all. They've seen it all. They're, yeah, yeah, they're, yeah. And, I mean, the people at Desire have the most uncanny ability to remember your name and your favorite oh, drink wow. across the years. Wow. Like, wow. I will walk in, get a hug and my drink, from the bartender on the beach God, when I arrive. That's you incredible. Know? So I, I don't know how they do that. <laughs> like, I seriously have no idea how this group of people almost universally is so conscious of wow. the people on the resort. I will say I've heard very specifically they do not have sex with the, okay. the, okay, the okay. patrons. <laughs> um, I don't know that that's actually the case. Yeah. It's mm-hmm. possible. I bet some do, Mm -hmm. but in general, they don't seem to. Uh, The party staff tends to get very, uh, very, very friendly with the the people they're dancing with. Interesting. Um, You know, that that scene, uh, the the happy ending massage scene, I I actually toned it down from the ridiculousness of what the the massages are like at the resort. Really? That was a toned down version? My goodness. Yeah, like the the couple's massage actually can include assisted thrusting. Oh, oh. Okay. Interesting. So as in like the couple. Sort of a butt massage and a. a... Yeah, like like the couple is having sex and being, and 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 their movement is being facilitated by the, by the massage there. Fascinating. That's like, I mean, I just. Wow. So I combine that with, there's a, there's a woman who works outside the resort. I see. uh, Whose name is Claudio. Oh, okay. Got it. Everybody, for the, for the last 25 years. Everybody who goes and wants a good massage, uh, they, they're like, no, you got to go see Claudia. Oh, <laughs> so uh, the first time I was there, I went, we went off resort to see Claudia and it was, it was the closest, you know, I'm not, I'm not at all a spiritual or woo woo person, <laughs> but it was the closest to transcendence I've yeah. ever experienced. I, I'm, I'm on the website right now and looking up these just <laughs> absolutely gorgeous pictures of actual desire. Um, yeah. And we did a episode on uh, polyamory and privilege, and I just wanted to ask, like, it it does seem like you have to have a lot of money to go on a oh, yeah. cruise or at, to this resort or something like that. So can you talk a little bit about that? Because there is kind of this this idea out there that's being talked about a lot that polyamory is only consisting of white, upper middle class, educated humans. And is that sort of the same idea with swingers, that that is a conception that, that that's what's happening? I feel like all non-monogamy is expensive. Sure. Simply by virtue yeah. of you're adding a lot of people and entertaining to your life, which mm-hmm. makes things expensive. Like if you had three uh, partners at once, it, it'd be very expensive, you know? Yeah. Uh, but desire is very expensive. Absolutely. I can imagine. Right. Um, one of the only reasons I can do it yearly is because I... I'm a host, you know, so that's different. Right. Yeah, right. Uh, I would not be attending every year if I was if I had to pay that yeah. money. Yeah. It, it's, yeah. it's a lot. Yeah. yeah. Um, but I would say this is true of of swinger parties too, and swinger yeah. clubs. Yeah. Like, yeah. The, like the, well, the, the clubs the, there's some barrier to entry. Yeah. Definitely based on like your income. Right. It would seem. Mostly, I think that the the clubs and the parties the barrier to entry is because the people throwing them are taking a, a financial and legal risk. Yeah, mm. yeah because if they get shut down, they could get sued. They could get all. There are a lot of things they could get uh, brought up as uh, for prostitution. That's actually oh, wow. a thing that's Jeez. happened. So, right. um, part of the reason that it's so expensive is there just aren't many good. 
I see you all looking at that. No, yeah. I know. Yeah, yeah, now we're all just found like a really. Oh, now you're really looking at naked mm-hmm. pictures. On the, the it's not even. It's just like a very attractive couple <laughs> that are not clothed on this website. <laughs> Sorry, yeah. You know, if you're going to look at websites, you should look at ssdesire.com, which is the swing set desire trip. So. Oh. oh, that's your trip. Nice. But uh, there I, goes the rest I of think, the episode. Yes. <laughs> I think there's a lot to be said about making swinging and polyamory accessible yeah. to people yeah. who can't afford to spend a hundred dollars on an evening out, yeah. you know, which, which is uh, often a swinger party expense. Um, yeah, and it's hard to do that. And I know it's something that I'm very conscious of, but I don't mm-hmm. see a way to do well, we're actually talking about doing a uh, swing set camping trip. There are oh, a few oh, campgrounds cool. in the Midwest that do uh, full nude takeover. Oh, nice. And nice. It doesn't matter. Yeah. Though, I mean, the bug problem is going to be interesting. <laughs> yeah, there. that's true. <laughs> but it, it oh, makes God. it a, li- a little bit more accessible because it's on the, you know, it's in the United States. Yeah. It's, uh, you could probably drive there because mm-hmm. it's Midwest, you know. Yeah. But it, even then, it's going to be a couple hundred dollars. And, yeah. and yeah. there's there's no real way to get like Burning Man, which was supposed to be like the most agrarian exactly. thing in the world. Exactly. It's still yeah. ridiculously expensive and yeah. hard to get tickets to. Yeah, I know there's now. been a lot of conversation around that, particularly this yeah. year. I feel like it was the first year that I saw a lot of conversation about how yeah. inaccessible Burning Man is. Oh, mm-hmm. for sure. Which yeah. is interesting. And we were, we were talking about this ahead of time, because and we were thinking about it. We're like, you know, polyamory events also sometimes can cost quite a bit of money. Like if you're going to go mm-hmm. to a workshop or if you're going to go to a conference. Um, oh, yeah. But maybe you know maybe less than than the normal swinger party would. But then we're like, well, but I guess you're paying less to just go talk about the thing rather than go do the thing. Sure. <laughs> um, yeah. But yeah. That we did come up with this question of like, is there something comparable for the swinging community? As in, are there things like discussion groups or like, like swinger processing groups? Yeah, I know. <laughs> like like these, these more accessible events that are, are either super cheap or free, mm-hmm. just to kind of meet the community rather yeah. than to go and have sex at the event. Yeah, we're getting there. Okay. You know, I see like the sex geekdom groups popping up all over the the country. I mean, that's not swinger related, but it's open and free and sexuality themed. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, I know the Tool Shed in Milwaukee puts on uh, inexpensive uh, classes. The Pleasure Chest in Chicago puts on free classes often. Yeah, the Pleasure Chest so, in LA also. Yeah, yeah. there are, free classes. are ways. It's. The, the swinger community, if you look at the overall community, by and large, they are uh, oddly solitary. Mm-hmm. You know, like, Interesting. you know, we've talked about, I think, I think I talked about with you, Polly has lived up front. Yeah. You know, you're, you're sure. basically, if you're committing to a life uh, as polyamorous, you're probably out to a decent level. All right. So so because you're out, it it's nothing to go to a group event, to mm-hmm. meet up at coffee mm-hmm. shops with other poly people to, to process. You don't see that in the swing community because there's still so much stigma attached to swinging and so much fear of being outed because you don't have to be out as a swinger. Yeah. 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 Yeah, that's well, interesting. Well, yeah. I mean, we've also talked about how, um, you know, part of – the polyamory's movement to be more accepted, uh, a lot like the gay rights movement, yeah. has been to really downplay the sex aspect yeah. of it and to kind of buy into society's sex negative way of looking at things. So, yeah, it's definitely true that with swinging, it's like, yeah, it is about the sex. Yeah, <laughs> That's okay, but I, but there is definitely more of a stigma to that, whereas poly yeah. people can can make the argument they're like oh it's not about that it's just about the love and relationships and mm-hmm. you know we generally encourage people not to do that too much <laughs> because unfortunately then we're just perpetuating this sex negative cycle yeah. uh, and it'll but, backfire but, eventually yeah, yeah. yeah. Right. yes definitely right. definitely yeah yeah, yeah um, and i think i think we're i mean i don't like to compare it to this but we're seeing similar um issues with the the trans rights movement following the gay rights movement because right. the gay rights movement we fought for all this land mm-hmm. and now you're walking in or the or the bi movement to wonder it's oh gosh. for sure yeah. so yeah. it's it's much easier i it's terrible but it's much easier to throw the other communities under the bus yeah. to retain so your stake in them. this place. Yeah. And the swingers do it to the poly people also. I don't want to make <laughs> well, it sound And poly like people I'm... do to the swingers. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. 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 So it's, it's really a, a case of, uh, yeah, 
my kink is not your kink and that's not okay. You should feel bad about it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Unfortunately it does tend to go there. Yeah. No, we, it's funny that you say that because we had Carrie Jenkins on a couple episodes Mm -hmm. ago and she's a poly philosopher and she's queer as well that she's had people say to her, like you're ruining gay rights for us. That's, you know, by being poly and being openly queer. Yeah. Which is, it's just, how how dare you live your own life? Yeah. Yeah. Dare you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, all right. So I'm going to change topics here a little bit. Um, so on your business card, or at least <laughs> last time I saw it, one of your lists of titles is a pegging enthusiast. Yes. Um, and, uh, well, I don't want to give too much away about the book, but there is some pegging that happens. There is. Uh, some, some, like, first-time pegging. I think that's right. the important yeah, yeah, yeah. thing is, like, somebody experiencing pegging for the first time, and it's right. very exciting. Um, I, I guess, like, can you just talk about that a little bit? <laughs> just I think it's, 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 it's a term that I've found, um, using it, a lot of people are like, huh? What? Until they've been introduced to it. So is this our segment where we try to increase like pegging, pegging awareness? One, pegging 101, go. <laughs> okay, pegging 101. Okay, it's the most oddly specific sex, sex act there is. Okay. It requires, pretty much completely, a man and a woman, a woman with a strap on, okay. fucking a man in the ass. Okay. And that is the right. only thing that is pegging. Got you know, it. Cause, because uh, a, a woman with a strap on fucking another woman in the You've ass, that that's yeah. not pegging. Oh, you pe- wait, hang on. A hang man on. fucking another man? Is there confusion? Wait, you pegged a guy? Yes, I have. What? <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I haven't I gone thought, to peg I a guy. You knew that. No, I didn't know that. Oh, I'm yeah. super jealous. Well, get on it. I, well, <laughs> well, get on it. I, you get on it. <laughs> Jeez. I feel like we could work this out right now. I know, right? <laughs> oh, come on. Now we have a pegging coach on the line. That's exactly. true. That's yeah. true. Okay, so all right, so so that's what it is. And you were, you were yeah. saying that that um, it, it is somewhat weirdly specific in terms of what actually counts as pegging. Um, okay, walk us through like how how would we go about this? I mean, okay. it feels it feels pretty self explanatory if you ask me. <laughs> I see. Well, I think that's what? not necessarily true. He's an enthusiast about it. He probably knows a lot more. You than teach pegging any of workshops, us. right? I, I do teach yeah. pegging. Wait, are there so better ways to do it? Well, here's here's the deal. <laughs> now we're know, overthinking. Pegging, <laughs> we have to, like everything else we're talking about, we have to overcome stigma. Mm-hmm. Okay. And that stigma is: Will I become gay if? My partner fucks me in the ass with a strap on. That's yes. how I became gay. Yeah, well, yeah, what? That's how a lot of people became <laughs> That's what gay, people apparently. think? Oh, God. Yeah. That's no, what, people, that's what a lot of people, so many no, men no. think that. Like, yeah. so many men are afraid of even, like, having a finger because it's like, does this mean that I'm gay? If yeah. I like it. Because any If gay. you like it, that might, I've that had men might who are, mean. I've had men who say that, like, ridiculous. they don't even want to use a bidet because, you know, stuff near the asshole, that seems a little gay. No, like, it actually happened. What? I know, right? I mean, using a bidet is 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 c- closer to gay for many other reasons than that. But, but you no, know, it's it's really uh, sad. And, you know, like, I can have prostate orgasms. Yeah. And so that's like multiple gushing orgasms for a woman. I can have an orgasm. My first one lasted 50 minutes. Wow. Wow. <laughs> it's, it's a thing that as I as I explored and more and more and more, I got better and better and better at it. So yeah. like um you know women who have squirting orgasms will often say that once they start they start to combine with your other orgasms and then just like it's an all the time thing. Hmm. Which is true of my prostate orgasms. Once hmm. I started having them, now they happen just when I'm being touched, you know? Wow. So it's it's amazing and it's something we can we can do that we don't. <laughs> <laughs> because we're afraid of it. Sure. Yeah. And that's such a shame. Damn. And what I, um, you know, I like, I, I talk a lot about how in the womb, we were all one gender. Mm-hmm. And then labia fused and, be- and the ovaries dropped and became balls. The clit enlarged and became a cock. And you know what happened to the G spot? It became a prostate. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and if you feel a G spot and a prostate at the same time, I've done it. I recommend it. <laughs> they feel exactly the same. And yeah. if, if we look right at them, yeah, yeah, yeah. if they are the same, they produce the same kind of pleasure. And it, it really gives a lot of, uh, like, what the fuck are you doing to the scientists who claim there isn't a G-spot? Yeah. Because sure. that prostate, it it's somewhere in yeah. there. Yeah. Yeah. Right. 
but uh, it's all it's all fear, you know. And and the the other thing is, uh, it's been proven. Well, it's been it's been suggested that prostate massage will help prevent prostate cancer. Mm. Wow. Well, yeah. There you go. No, I've heard that one too. That that um, men who receive anal sex have much lower incidence of prostate cancer oh, than well. men who don't. Yeah. Well, yeah. homework. So I highly recommend pegging. And the reason I call myself an enthusiast is because I'm not an expert. I should not be taken as an expert. But you have 50 minute long orgasms. How are you not (laughs) an expert? pretty expert level to me. (laughs) That that may be pro, but it's not an expert. That's pro. Okay, he's in in the big leagues. I can't even imagine what expert level would be then. (laughs) Wow. Well, I could talk about this all day, but sadly we cannot. I'm afraid we're going (laughs) to abandon our podcast and just do one on pegging from now on. Now it's all going to be pegging. Yeah. Hey, I, I'll I'll come back for that. Yeah. <laughs> that would Perfect. Be good. Yeah, nice. Perfect. Um, awesome. Do we? Yeah. Yeah. yeah so, Cooper, uh, can you let us know or let our listeners know where can they find your book? Where can they find more of your stuff? Yes, uh, you can find all my stuff at cooperspeckett dot com. Uh, the book, if, you, if so, it's out today. Then, okay, yeah. yes, it comes out so today. Yes. Please buy it from cooperspeckett dot com as an ebook or paperback. Um, or approaching the swingularity.com, but it really just goes to the same place. Okay. You can Got also it. buy it on Amazon and other places, but I'm an independent publisher, so I'd really appreciate it if you yeah. bought it from me. Cool. Got uh, it. You can find me, uh, my, my podcast, Life on the Swing Set, at lifeontheswingset.com, and our Swing Set Network that you guys you know, should be familiar with <laughs> yeah. as an audience <laughs> of these lovely right people uh-huh. at swingset.fm. Um, mm-hmm. I'm on social media, Cooper S. Beckett, pretty much everywhere, but it does get political. So if you don't like that, <laughs> like if that, if you got really upset about uh, a third of the way into this podcast, <laughs> right. you they shouldn't make it to this Twitter. point if they, yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> uh, wow. All right. Great. Thank you so much for being on the show again, Cooper. We hope mm-hmm. to talk to you more soon. Yeah. My pleasure. I'd love to come back soon. Thank you all so much. If you want to find any links to the things that we've talked about in this show, you can find those in the show notes, either in our iTunes listing or at our website, multiamory.com. You can also find us on Twitter, Facebook, Instagram, uh, Reddit, Reddit, a bunch of other places. Just look for Multiamory and you'll find us. Uh, And if you want to write to us, you can write to info at multiamory.com. And we do read personally. The three of us will read every message that we get, Mm -hmm. and we respond to them as well. Uh, We love actually interacting with our community, hearing what it is that you want to talk about, maybe sharing some info with us that you think we need, all of that. We love getting that kind of feedback from you guys. Uh, So thank you all so much, and we'll see you next week. See you next week. Bye.